To fully understand Yi, we need to understand it from different aspects. In this video, I will explain what question Yi is really asking, and then how to analyze and solve it. It goes like this: If we have one unit of object growing at a hundred percent per unit time, then what would it be one unit time later? Seems easy. Should be two, right? Of course, that's too good to be true. The trick is with the growth rate. It's related to natural growth, which is continuously growing. Let's use an example. Say we have one unit cell. A bit later, it grows by a tiny bit. In the next little while, the mother cell still here. It will give birth to a second kid, and her first kid, and the first grandkid. Going to the next period, we have the mother cell, its third kid, second kid, newborn of the second kid, first kid, newborn of the first kid, the kid from the last period, and the first fourth generation. So you can imagine going to the end, we will have the mother cell, its own kid, grandkids, grand grandkids, and so on. So the hundred percent growth is speaking in terms of the mother cell. Those direct descendants from the mother cell, they add up to one. So it's obvious that the final must be greater than two. But what is it, and how small this gap should be to be continuous growth? For one period, we have one times one plus one unit. For two periods, each grows a half. So we first have one plus a half. Viewing this as a whole, next we have this whole thing times one plus a half. Doing three periods, we have one plus a third first, then times one plus a third, and finally times another one times a third. So if we do n periods, the growth rate for each step is one over n. So each step we multiply by. One plus one over n. The n value would be to the power of n. For continuous growth, we're asking, what will happen if n goes to infinity? Now we need to analyze this term. This compact formula gives us a quick way to compute. Plug in the number for n, you get the answer. But this one number doesn't have any structures. We don't know what it's made of. So we want an expansion of this term into different components. That way, we can analyze what's important and what's not. Remember this simple case we learned in school, but at that time I didn't really see the points. This is only one specific case of a more general theorem, binomial theorem. The components are products of a and b, with different powers, a from power of n n minus one. All the way to zero. B, on the other hand, from zero all the way to n. So you can see the two powers always add up to n. The coefficients for each term is called binomial coefficient. It's a ratio of these factorials. You can find more details in my video about binomial theorem. This expansion allows us to see the outcome in terms of the components. Let's apply it in our growth formula. Remember, one over n is the growth rate per period. So we use r to represent it and do the expansion. Now their meanings are clearer. Each time you multiply by r, it means you've grown once. So if we're talking about the cell growth problem, we have the original mother cell, its kids, grandkids. Grand grandkids until the nth generation. Using the ratio formula to calculate the coefficient, we get the number of each component. Since r is one over n, plug it in, we obtain the following expression. Now, separate the factorial from the terms involving n. The first one is the mother cell. The second is the direct descendants. Then the grandkids. Grand grandkids, and so on. When the growth is now stopped, that is, n is infinity, then the first few terms will be close to one. 
So only the factorial terms matter. Hence, we can approximate it using a sum of the factorial series. These inverse factorials die really fast. For example, seven factorial is five thousand. Eight factorial is forty thousand. Say we use eight terms, it's roughly two point seven one eight two seven eight. Adding another term, the impact is small. It won't change the result much. Adding another term, impact even smaller. The result stays pretty much the same. The fact that more and more terms will get you closer and closer to some number is called it has a limit. We call that limit e. So for continuous growth at a rate of 100% unit time, a unit cell will become e one unit time later. If we're talking about compound interest, a dollar would become e dollar. To calculate e, we use this infinite series. It's approximately 2.718828. What's radical is this limit e can never be known exactly. I want to remind you a different limit, the geometric series. We know the limit exists because we find it to be one. But here, we know the limit exists. However, we don't know exactly what it is. That's why we name it e. But if we can't know the limit exactly, then how can you be sure that it even exists? So in the future, we need to prove that first the limit does exist, and then it indeed can be calculated using such approximation.